You got to understand statists, the greatest danger to a statist is a person who is dedicated to one true God. So you look at China, and who is China going after? China's going after the Christians and the Muslims. Because both of them say, you ain't God. And you don't represent God, Xi Jinping. Status don't like monotheistic religion because it obviously means that if the state will put into practice meaningful morality and ethics based upon the equivalency of the Ten Commandments and God's moral law, we'll be the best citizens you'll ever have. But that's not what state wants. The state always wants more power. It always, you know, Winston has to sit in the cafe at the end and say, I love Big Brother. Wants your worship. Wants your, wants your, your whole heart. He'll kill you once he gets you, but, but that's what's got to happen. And that's not going to happen with Christianity. And so we have to think this through. And we have to, I would highly suggest something along the lines of a letter to Caesar, a letter to Caesar, a statement to the governing authorities as to where their authority is derived from and where it ends. And that the Church of Jesus Christ derives its authority from him and him alone, and that therefore there are certain aspects of this life that they have no authority over. They have no authority to tell us how to worship. They have no authority to tell us that we cannot sing, for example. Now, does that mean we should ignore risks? No. But the fact of the matter is, folks, every time any Christian from the days of the apostles has opened his or her mouth to sing, there was a risk. It's almost like we, we've decided that, oh, this is a brand new thing. It only started in 2020. All of this was, life was risk-free until 2020. No, that's not the case. And you could make a very strong argument, a very strong argument, based upon some of what is being said today, that the very fact that the church gathered over the course of centuries was irresponsible for the church. Irresponsible. Because life has always been risky. And countless people have died because they went to church. That's a reality. That's a fact. You can close your eyes to it. You can close your ears to it. You can not, not want to think about it. That's a fact. And in fact, living life without risk is not living life. That's, that's the way God made this world. He is in control of when we leave it. And so the... I think we, churches as a whole, really need to be thinking through where we take the stand. We don't want to take the stand with these independent fundamentalist Baptists who are simply poking their, eye, their, their finger in the eye of the state because they like poking their finger in the eye of everybody. That's just because they're irascible. It's because they like to be mean-spirited. It's because they like to hear themselves screaming and jumping up and down or doing whatever else they're, they're doing. We, we don't want to be them. We don't want to act like them. We don't want to embrace that kind of a perspective, that kind of a worldview. But how do we differentiate ourselves? Well, we have to have a principled, biblical understanding of the rights of the church and the fact that any government, this is what was so beautiful about that letter that the Chinese pastors sent to the government two years ago, most of whom are now in prison, that, that basically said, you know, if you, would, if you would do what you say you're going to do, 
we'd be the best citizens that you would have because we have no interest in engaging in criminal activity or doing anything else. But the fact of the matter is, you're under the lordship of Christ and you need to repent because he's king of kings and lord of lords. And that, of course, abject heresy in the CCP. That's, that's, that, 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 is, that is committing heresy in that culture. And we need to know, look, how many churches ran face first into COVID-19 and had never, ever thought seriously about how to put together in a consistent way a, a Christian worldview that, that takes seriously the Lordship of Christ, the authority of the church, the nature of the ordinances of the church, the sacraments of the church, the importance of those things, why we meet, what is central, what is definitional of worship. Oh, wow, there was a huge black hole that remains a big black hole. Um, we ran into this without ever having been forced to cram all this into one consistent thing. And my hope and prayer is that out of this will come a great deal more consistency as we talk with one another about these things and as we recognize where our differences are and realize that for a lot of us, the differences are simply because we've just not thought about it before. We've never been forced to. Now, the only way that we can really do that and have all the voices at the table is if we don't do recrimination for what has happened in the past. And so my fellow elders will tell you one of the first things I said the first couple of weeks this was going on was what, however we do this, we've got to do it in such a way that at least as far as it relies upon us, we are not by continuing to meet saying to everybody else, you guys are lesser than us. You, you, you don't, we don't, we do not honor your eldership. We don't honor you. No, no, we've got to make sure that as far as it relies upon us, but here's the problem. It only lies upon us so, so far. Um, when people see that there have been churches, and there are a few, not many, and there are some, some states, I don't know that there can be any, because you have uh, rather authoritarian structures in, in place. Um, but the fact is, when people see churches that have continued to meet all the way through this faithfully, that that's taken as, well, you must be saying all the rest of us are lesser than you, even when, when you don't say that. Even when you've avoided attempting to give any kind of indication of that whatsoever. Uh, the, I think that those of us who have continued to meet can learn from those who did not, and I'd like to think that those that did not could learn from those of us who did to understand why we felt those things were that important to continue to do, despite the request of the government not to, and the eventual creation of a not, not a theological cons consensus that was derived out of scholarly articles and reflection and everything else. It's just... Well, we all ended up in this position, so it must have been the right thing to do. Well, that, that doesn't make it the right thing to do. So as we move forward, can we move forward? Can we move forward together? I think denominations are going to have to try to develop some type of consistent theological understanding of what worship is, what the local church is, things like that. But a lot of this does require, I think, some fundamental examination of some foundational issues that the American evangelical church has taken for granted, has adopted traditions that are not really consistently biblical at all. Um, and so, we're, you know, where are we going to go from here is really, is really the question. I hope we have the opportunity to really think these things through. I don't know how much time before the next crisis 
Because what I'm seeing is we can't do it through the legislature. We can't do it through the courts. We'll do it through crisis. We'll do it through crisis. Uh, we will lasso this culture, and we will drag it into techno-totalitarianism. You've seen, I think it was Bulgaria or Romania. Bulgaria, I think. And South Korea is doing the same thing. Wristbands. GPS tracking wristbands. Uh, so in South Korea, you weren't not, allowed, not allowed, allowed, allowed to leave your house. And so what would people do if they needed to or wanted to? They'd leave their cell phones behind. And so the government's like, oh, you could leave your cell phone behind. We'll put a permanent tracker on you. Wow. I mean, so, and, and early on, I said, your papers, please. And this is going to be your papers. I did. I'm not trying to say, oh, I'm not. that should have been obvious. It should have been obvious for years. Hindsight's 2020. Um, so since crises are so very effective, can you imagine, can you imagine in November of last year, if someone had come along and had said, look, we would like 40 million Americans to give up their jobs. And we would like a whole percentage of the nation's retail, restaurants, to go out of business. And we would like to disrupt the food chain. And we would like to threaten the continued existence of a large portion of the hospital system so that the rest of it has to be socialized. And we just, we would like you all to do this voluntarily. Voluntarily. How successful would that have been? Yeah, right now we have the lowest unemployment in years, but we want to jack it up past the depression and do all this other stuff to you. But we want you to do it to yourself. Who could have imagined? We did it to ourselves. We did it to ourselves. You, you, you can talk about putting the noose around the neck. You can talk about putting your head on the guillotine. You can talk about getting the shotgun out. Whatever you want to do. It was a self-inflicted decapitation. That's what it was. So that worked. <laughs> that worked really well. So do you really think they're just going to stop now and go, okay, we got a lot out of that one. Let's let that one rest for a while. No, no. There's more coming. There's more coming. And once it starts becoming a drumbeat, by then it's too late. Uh, we, you know, then it'll, we'll, we'll sort of get used to it, but the damage will be done. But for the church, we only have a some, cer certain amount of time to think these things through, try to get consistent. And what if we come to different conclusions? Can we still identify others as brothers and sisters if we end up in a different place here. I mean, I'd be really, I don't know, but I would be really interested in knowing what the situation in China is in regards to the relationships of different kinds of churches, the churches that refuse any type of state sanction versus the churches that have some level of state sanction versus the fully state sanctioned churches. What's the relationship between those people? I don't know. Should have. Should. I don't. Try to find out, I suppose. See, this is, this is really where one of the problems is. We think that worship is the music part. <laughs> The worship is the authoritative proclamation of God's truth that then conforms the people of God to the image of Jesus Christ and brings conviction to sinners, makes known God's truth in this world. This is how he's worshiped. We are showing our submission to God by being a part of that proclamation. By sitting there, we are saying, I believe this is true. I believe this word comes from God, and that is my highest authority. That's what the state fears. And when we replace, 
that's when we replace the proclamation with the music. The music's wonderful. The music's great. I love having the music. That's all one wonderful and great, and, and it's a part of the worship, yes. But one of the biggest things that the church has missed has been the replacement of the authoritative proclamation of God's truth as the act of worship with singing. Singing supports that, everything else, but the reality is what we believe is when God's word is being handled and opened and proclaimed with authority, when it's been exegeted properly, you can say, thus saith the Lord. If you don't do exegesis, you cannot say, honestly, thus saith the Lord. But when you do it, you can say, this is what the Lord says, and that is authoritative not only for those who submit to him, it's authoritative for those who don't. And that's why China hates it. And that's why the leftists hate it, and that's why they will try to stamp it out, and that's why it is happening in, in back rooms in China and in other places in the world. And it may be happening in that way here, too, which means each local church needs to be thinking about what happens when the state says, okay, that's it. We can't let you meet it all anymore. It's just too dangerous. Now, that danger could be COVID-21. That danger could be a, a bacteria we've never heard of before. Uh, that danger could be the danger you represent to the state's best interests, as it is in China, North Korea, and other places, and as is coming to us at a rapid pace of, uh, incredible pace, pace uh, speed. So what you going to do then, hero? Have you started thinking through how, where, or do you just give up? And the real challenge here is with technological advancement, it is so much easier to follow people. It's so much easier to follow people. And... So we pray. When we pray, God, deliver us from evil men and women. When we pray that prayer, we are recognizing God has the power to do so. So if he does not, it is his judgment. It is his judgment. And given that our, our nation in the United States and the vast majority of other nations in the world has blood all over, over its hands from the murder of our own children, we can hardly sit there and go, oh, he wouldn't do that. Why not? We've used our freedom to murder our children. Why shouldn't he take it away?